the mystery of Lao Tzu. Like, so what was the mystery? Lao Tzu, or Laozi as he is often called, is an ancient Chinese philosopher who seems to have lived around the 6th century BC, although exact dates get a bit murky that far back. He is the author of the Tao Te Ching, and he is credited as the founder of Taoism. But that is not why we are interested in Lao Tzu now. You see, we have done a lot of work on a book titled Alien Interview, edited by Lawrence R. Spencer. Now, the content of that book was sent to him to publish by someone who claimed to be a nurse who attended one of the survivors of the famous Roswell UFO crash. She was assigned to communicate with the survivor, and she kept a detailed set of notes of what happened. Now, when she left military service, she was able to secretly keep a copy of her notes. The ET who was interviewed over a long period of time by the nurse was a female who called herself Earl. Now, we have conducted a variety of projects that have investigated elements of that book, and everything we have investigated seems to be true. The book appears to be factual. Now, the biggest take home from that book is a detailed explanation of what we call the death traps, which is something that is encountered by nearly everyone after they die on Earth. We don't use the word soul or spirit because of the religious baggage associated with those words. Rather, we use the word isbi, which comes from that book. And it means a person who simply is for the purpose of being. We are all isbis. Well, using remote viewing as it is practiced at Farsight, we found out that the death traps as described in the book are real. And if you have not seen it, I really encourage everyone to watch our project titled The Death Traps that you can find on farsightprime.com. Now, the planet Earth is run as a prison, literally, by some very bad ETs who keep everyone living on this planet as an imprisoned slave population. And this has been going on for a very long time. Basically, when you die, your ISB self pops out of your body and you see the famous light. That light is an electronic wave that is designed to attract all ISBs who are freed from their bodies. It draws you in. It is activated by your thoughts. And the more you fight against it, the more sticky it becomes, making it nearly impossible for you to escape. Now, at that point, a process takes over where you are drawn to a place where you are exposed to an extremely high voltage shock that stuns the ISBI and forces a state of amnesia. You also lose the ability to communicate telepathically, and it inhibits the ISBI's ability to perceive in a manner that we would call remote viewing, which is why humans on Earth have to train to do these things. It no longer comes naturally. Then an AI comes in who says something like, we have discussed your case with the Council of Elders. See the Council of Elders over there? And we think that there are a few points in your personality that could use some work. Remember that argument that you had with your child, the anger you held with your mother or your father or your grandparent or whatever? Well, we think you should go back and work on those things, but it is up to you. You have to decide. Well, with no memory because of the electric shock, everything seems reasonable to the ISBI and the ISBI agrees to live yet another life on Earth. Reincarnation is not a universal spiritual experience. It is a recycling of souls who are kept here as members of a tortured prison population. We checked out a lot of things written in the book, Alien Interview, and so far everything seems to be on the up and up. Apparently the Roswell crash happened, and one of the survivors communicated lots of stuff to this nurse lady who was acting as a telepathic translator for the US military folks. Well. Back to Lao Tzu. One of the things that the E.T. Earl said, as reported in the book Alien Interview, is that Lao Tzu was able to escape the death traps after death. Now, the basic story from legend is that when he was very old, he went to a rural place to leave his body and he died. Earl, the E.T., said that they did not understand exactly how Lao Tzu was able to escape the death traps. It was a mystery even to them but he must have had a deep understanding of his Isby nature, and he must have known that his physical body was not really him. He must have deeply understood that his Isby self was the real him in order to figure out how to escape from the prison system. So, 
we at Farsight have often wondered if Lao Tzu really did escape the death traps, and we want to know exactly what Lao Tzu did to accomplish this. It really is a mystery, and this project that you are watching right now is our attempt to answer this mystery. And we learned a lot, a whole lot. The mystery of how Lao Tzu escaped the death traps is a bit complicated, but it is truly worth knowing. It emphasizes to all of us how important it is for everyone to have an intimate understanding of one's true nature as an Isbi. It is the key to breaking out of this prison. So, let's begin. I am Courtney Brown, director of Farsight, and at Farsight we study the perceptual process known as remote viewing. Remote viewing is a mental process that is done using highly structured methodologies that are derived from those developed by the United States military and used for espionage purposes. But Farsight is civilian, and we use remote viewing for scientific experiments and for exploration. This new project conducted at Farsight employs remote viewers who are among the most experienced and highly trained viewers existing today. The remote viewers all describe much the same thing, all corroborating reports, and it is worth emphasizing that the remote viewing was done totally blind and none of the remote viewers communicated with one another about the project during the data collection phase. Even their final presentations were recorded on video with no one else in the room. This is not science fiction told through riveting remote viewing conducted under defendable, clean scientific conditions. This is as real as it gets. Now, every remote viewing project begins with a target. That is what becomes the center of attention for the remote viewers. Now, obviously, none of the remote viewers knew the target or the nature of the project when they did their work. They were only told the target after all of their data were submitted, including their work on video. So the target for this project has two focuses. The first focus is Lao Tzu when he is writing the Tao Te Ching. Lao Tzu is subject A. Now the second focus is Lao Tzu at the moment of his death. So we are interested in learning more about Lao Tzu during his life when he was trying to help other humans by writing his book. And then, obviously, we want to know what happened to him when he died. Specifically, we want to know Lao Tzu after he dies and what becomes of him. Did his Isbi encounter the death traps? Did he escape from the death traps? Did he avoid the death traps? And if he did escape from the death traps, did he have help? These are all things we want to know about. Starting with a session by Intisam and then Aziz Brown, Yeme Jene, and finally Shante, here are our perceptions of Lao Tzu at the time when he was writing the Tao Te Ching and then what happened to him after his physical body died. This is the true story of what really happened to Lao Tzu. This is the first time anyone on the planet Earth has ever learned about this, and everyone needs to watch it. After you watch all of the sessions, I will return to help pull everything together.